In this video, we will discuss the pros and cons of WebRTC, which are important for you to consider as you architect your application. This is the big deal about WebRTC. Your users don't need to install any plugins or download any software to use video and audio directly in the browser. This is a huge positive because it means that you can communicate with your customers in the context of whatever they are already doing on your website. If they want to talk to customer service, they don't need to switch to another application like Skype or pick up the telephone. They just click on customer service on your site and you can put them directly into a video chat with a representative. The first thing that happens in a WebRTC call is a handshaking progress between your web application and the participants of a WebRTC call. This is called signaling and we will cover it more in other videos. For now though, what you should understand is that after the signaling is complete and a WebRTC connection has been established between you and another user, your connection is now completely peer-to-peer. -peer. This is a wonderful thing for many applications and a big positive about WebRTC. It's especially nice for data-intensive applications like video chat or file sharing because it means the communication is happening directly between the two users who care about the data or video being exchanged. No intermediary server needs to host the data or stream it to other parties. This makes WebRTC a very efficient solution for data or video exchange between two parties. This also means that WebRTC can scale extremely well for small conversations. The load put on your servers by signaling is very small. Once the peer-to-peer -peer connection has been established between two parties, your server is out of the loop, and so you can theoretically build a WebRTC-based service that allows for thousands of simultaneous video chats between small groups of people. I have a little bit of a privacy nut streak in me. That's unfortunate because I have a very unique name, and so if you find anything on the internet from Aaron Syme, it's hard to deny that is me. Fortunately, I'm also a pretty boring person, so this doesn't cause any practical concerns. If you care about privacy too, then it's good to know that WebRTC has us covered. Once the peer-to-peer -peer connection is established between two WebRTC clients, all traffic between those two clients is completely encrypted. I'm not going to guarantee someone can't break that encryption, but at least the wall is there to slow them down, and it's harder to do a man-in-the-middle attack since the data is exchanged peer-to-peer. -peer. WebRTC is very interesting to consider for healthcare and remote telemedicine applications because the natively encrypted communications channels that WebRTC provides are an important step to ensuring regulatory compliance. In the United States, for example, using WebRTC does not automatically mean your application will be HIPAA compliant, but it will be a nice feather in your cap when you try to meet those regulations. Regardless of any regulations, it's just plain good manners to encrypt sensitive patient information and medical data, so WebRTC is a great choice for those type of real-time communications. This also makes WebRTC a great choice for corporate applications where enterprise security concerns control the use of sensitive company data outside the internal company networks. One important thing to note is that the signaling or handshaking required to start a WebRTC connection is not encrypted. Be careful about including uniquely identifying information about users in the signaling code or you may cause a security leak. The WebRTC encryption will still protect the content of the conversation, but including sensitive information in the signaling process could allow hackers to determine who is in conversations at what times, and that alone may be information you don't want to share. This is the biggest disclaimer that needs to be given about WebRTC, and unfortunately this disclaimer is likely to apply for a while longer. WebRTC is fully supported in the latest versions of Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. Internet Explorer and Safari do not support WebRTC as of this recording. However, it is expected that Microsoft will release a browser supporting WebRTC. There are no public plans for WebRTC support in Safari, but it'll probably happen eventually. If you have an application where you can dictate which browsers your users must use for your app, or you are just speculatively building an app for a future market, which is a good idea in my opinion, then WebRTC is definitely for you. The current state of WebRTC on mobile devices is underwhelming. Chrome, Firefox, and Opera are supported in mobile browsers, but this only applies to Android devices. There is no WebRTC support in any iOS browser at this time, and there is not native application support for WebRTC built into iOS. That's a big hurdle to future adoption of WebRTC. There are commercial platforms that will allow you to seamlessly integrate WebRTC applications with support for all major browsers and mobile devices, 
but WebRTC by itself cannot work on iOS at this point. This means if you need support on iOS, Safari Desktop, or Internet Explorer, you need to explore commercial platforms that will blend WebRTC support with those other platforms. This means users on a non-WebRTC device will have to install an app or download a plugin. That takes some of the fun out of the WebRTC marketing pitch, but at least you can still build your app. Previously, I said that the peer-to-peer -peer nature of WebRTC is an advantage. That's definitely true. It's a big positive. But it also has a big downside. It doesn't scale well to large video calls. WebRTC doesn't create a burden on your web server for additional parties in a video chat because your web server only has to deal with the signaling. And the work of actually transmitting and receiving the video and audio between two parties is handled directly between your users' browsers. That's great because you don't need a complicated media server or video streaming service. But this won't work well if you want calls with a lot of people. WebRTC only supports peer connections, which means that if you want to have a group video chat, every party to the conversation must have a separate WebRTC peer-to-peer -peer connection to every other party in the conversation. This is referred to as a mesh network, and it is not scalable. You simply won't be able to use WebRTC in its native form for a video chat between dozens of people. There's no set limit built into WebRTC, but a practical limit is probably between four to eight participants in a single conversation. WebRTC scales well to lots of simultaneous small conversations across your application, since there's no increased load on your web server, but it does not scale well to large conversations. If you can control the number of participants in your calls and the browsers your participants use, then you are ready to start using WebRTC right away. Deploy to production. However, if your customers require IE, Safari, or native mobile devices, you need to go with a modified WebRTC solution, at least for now. Eventually, there will be more native support across those platforms, but it's best not to wait for it. Fortunately, there are a number of commercial providers that you can look at which will help you bridge this gap. That probably means losing a little bit of WebRTC's no plugins charm, because that's how these companies can bridge the gap, but they've made it as painless as possible. Using one of these commercial platforms may add to the cost of building and running your application, but it also gives you the peace of mind that someone else is dealing with the uglier sides of a bleeding edge technology. That's a pretty good trade off to make if you're trying to beat your competitors to market with an innovative product. In this video, you've seen some of the major selling points of WebRTC, as well as its biggest drawbacks. Some of these negatives will hopefully go away over time, like browser and native mobile support, but it's important that you start building your WebRTC application with a full understanding of the positives and the negatives. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.